Hey guys, welcome back. This is video two of two covering the bulk of our framing on our new home. In this video, you're gonna see us frame everything from the subfloor up to the roof joist and sheathing of the roof. And then you'll also see us frame and uh, put the roof joist on the garage as well. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. We're building our own modern off-grid home here in the mountains of North Carolina, and we would love for you to follow along. So let's get into it. Okay, so in the last video you saw us frame up our floor system and then lay our subfloor using a Vantec. Now we're ready to lay out our walls. This is a pretty critical step in any building um, as accuracy um, or inaccuracies tend to compound and to worse and worse problems the more you go up. The key here is mark out all your walls and then check between them and make sure that they're all parallel, square, and so on and so forth. There is no such thing as a perfect home, so you will have some air, and an experienced builder really will know where to put that air to make the, a minimum impact on the overall outcome of the house. In this case, we had a little bit of air in our floor systems, and I believe we pushed the air into our coat closet area, and really what you wanna do is stay away from any rooms that have cabinetry, countertops. You don't want any countertops to be out of square in the corners. Once the layout's complete, we'll begin building and standing our walls. And a lot of people do this uh, a variety of different ways. The way we like to do it, it seems to take longer on the front end, but I can guarantee you it is faster in the long run. Um, I am a general contractor and I've hired many framing companies as subcontractors. Some of them, not all of them, like to come in, frame the walls, stand them up, get the roof on, and then the house looks like it's 90% complete as far as framing goes. And they usually will ask for 90% of their money at that point. And then they'll come back and do the plywood sheathing, the tape, you know, and all these things when the walls are stood up take much longer. And I guarantee you will never have as quality of a job as framing your walls, laying flat, sheathing them, taping them, and then standing them up. They're heavy uh, like that. And that's why a lot of framing companies also choose to do it uh, differently but we use framing jacks. You can get these for relatively cheap and it enables two guys to do what it would take six, seven, eight guys to do as far as lifting some walls. We also have all metal framing braces. Other subcontractors I've worked with in the past, they like to use 16 foot two by fours and we'll buy a you know, hundred of them. And usually what happens to that wood is it goes in the trash. Our metal braces here are awesome. They're adjustable. You screw them into the floor, you screw them into the wall, and you can adjust it with a wrench and push the wall in or out. So there's what we call through walls and butt walls. So the through walls are the first walls that we stood up and they stretch from outside corner to outside corner of the home. And then the butt walls are the walls that are stood up or built between the through walls and they go from the inside corner of the house to the inside corner of the house. We stand the through walls up and then the butt wall needs to stand up between them. So on these, we save the butt walls for our sloped walls. And what we did here is, since we already knew the elevation here on our first through wall and our lower elevation over here on our second through wall, what we did is we just pulled a string and then we set a laser down and marked every 16 inches on our bottom plate. And then we just frame this in place, which is what we call balloon framing. Um, a lot of times when we frame on a, a foundation, you know, it's gonna have deviations and be a little uneven. So 
if you want your walls perfectly straight, a lot of times we balloon frame that and that's where each stud is measured and cut and measured and cut and measured and cut and put in place vertically instead of standing up the wall. So that's what we did here. That's the easiest way I found to do a single slope roof. Usually this house is 16 inches on center. You'll see us laying out doors, windows, headers, jacks, kings. We assemble all of that. We square our wall on the ground. We start putting our plywood down. Vogue. I'm sure we've mentioned this in probably every video, but this land is incredibly rocky. Even though we had help moving the really large boulders out of the way before we started the foundation, the ground is still covered in smaller rocks. Before we're finished, we'll have to do some work underneath the house and all of those rocks seemed like a safety hazard and honestly, I just got tired of almost tripping over them all the time. So I started moving them into piles away from the house. I didn't realize how much I was getting into, but if you ever want a great workout, go toss some rocks for a few hours. One of the interesting things about this house, it's a single slope roof, which means it's, they're just roof joist and there is no attic space on this house. The one roof where our bedroom is here, which is the longest front to back, it's 50 feet of an upsloping roof. That had to be broken half with the roof joist because we couldn't get roof joists that long. And even if we did, they would have needed support in the middle. So we broke those roof joists at approximately halfway onto a LVL beam above the ceiling. There's a lot going on right here. It's hard to explain, but there are two beams going across the short dimension of the house. 
and that is going to carry the weight of all the batteries to the solar. So we basically created an attic space just for the batteries for the solar, and that's a conditioned attic uh, with some ventilation for the batteries. So as far as the attic goes, and I'm kind of using footage from different points of completion here to try to illustrate this, this part of the house is unique in that the ceiling joists run perpendicular to the roof joist. We did that because we needed the south sloping roof for our solar panels, and it didn't make sense to frame the ceiling across the long dimension or with the slope of the roof. It was cheaper and easier to frame the ceiling the short dimension or perpendicular to the roof slope. One of the downsides to that is you have somewhat of a weak structure. So we needed to add some diagonal bracing across the ceiling joists connecting to the pony walls above the ceiling system. And what I mean by pony walls is we broke the walls into two walls, so they were easier to build and lift in place. So we have an 11 foot wall that we stood first, and then we framed a short sloping wall on top of that and nailed them together to form one large wall. This also helped in that it gives us a top plate to land our ceiling joist on. Other than that ceiling, this home was pretty easy given that it's a single slope roof. The garage was also fairly simple, but it does have a pretty large span for the size eye joist we used. So we doubled them up to get the strength required to make that work. So for framing the garage, we have a four foot foundation wall and we laid our walls on top of that. But first we had to use pressure treated bottom plates. The board that runs flat against the concrete has to be pressure treated by code. And then you'll also see us put down some pink foam, which is a sill sealer. When we're done with the garage, we're gonna go around with liquid flashing and cover the seam between the block and the home, making an airtight seal. Okay, so one of the trickiest things about the roof system on this, it's actually pretty straightforward since it's all eye joist. Um, but one of the trickiest things is each one of those, the eye joist has multiple uh, miters or beveled ends that look a little something like this. The roof will pitch up um, one inch per 12 inches. And then the end of this needs to be plumb to the ground when this is pitched. And then from there, we need to figure out our fascia height, which is eight inches. And then we need another bevel that comes way back, something like this, and then goes straight. And that's on both sides of each truss. Um, so one of the things I want to consider here, since the soffit material is all tongue and groove pine, um, is I want an even number um, of tongue and groove boards before this pitch change or the angle change. So I'm going to do all the math on that, see what works best. Um, the worst case scenario on something like this is you have a little one inch strip for every single one of these, which would be a big pain in the butt. So I'm going to do the math, I'm going to make a template, and then I'm going to show you how we manage cutting all these accurately. Once we got to our living area and kitchen, there's a 32 foot wide by 10 foot door in this room that stacks as it opens. So you'll notice the wall here is 12 inches thick to accommodate those four panels deep on each side of the door. One of the things we were dreading from day one was definitely putting in the header above that because it's heavy and humongous. It's six 40 feet long, 18 inch LVLs stacked together and it's just, it's a beast. 
You'll see we were kind of trying to figure out the best method to get the LVLs in place, but the more we got up there, the better we got at it. The guys had done a similar setup on another house they built, so it wasn't anything super new to them, but being limited on manpower up here made it a little more challenging. But we made it work. Once we finish the roof joist, there's one spot where a wall intersects with a downward sloping roof, and this is not good. If left alone, there would be water standing at the wall, and it would likely leak into the home. You really never want this situation if you can avoid it. So what we had to do there was build a cricket. This way, when the water comes down the roof, it gets diverted before hitting the wall. You've probably seen these before on chimneys or other protrusions on roof structures. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Next time we'll be taking care of some framing odds and ends like our drop soffit, the blocking for our soffit and fascia, deck structure, and our window installation, mm -hmm. and hopefully our roof. Hopefully. So stay tuned for next time. We'll see you then. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> Welcome to my mysterious box of whatever. <laughs> You got the knife? Why don't you use the knife? We don't have a knife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>